Modern. 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 We're prepping for a voyage. Modern. The force of an old fashioned equals whiskey mass times bitters acceleration. Why don't you make that a double? Modern Bar Cart. What's shaking, cocktail fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Modern Bar Cart Podcast. I'm your host, Modern Bar Cart CEO, Eric Koslick. Thanks for joining me for this episode where we mop up all the tasty bits, all the gravy and delicious dribblings that didn't quite make it into the other episodes from the Modern Bar Cart LA road trip. In particular, Brian Davis regales us with some of the more obscure and interesting stories related to Navy Strength Rum and the British fleet. And then we catch up with Chris Olds, who runs the beverage program at Guild Hall in Burbank. We talk about his unique approach to cocktails and learn why esports bars are such great places to hang out. But first, as always, I want you to take this opportunity just for you. Just take a little time for you and make yourself a drink. This episode's featured cocktail is simply called Gunfire. To make this, you'll need one cup of black tea, which is usually in the neighborhood of six to eight ounces, depending on the size of your vessel, and two ounces of Navy Strength rum. Combine these in your mug or glass of choice, give it a quick stir, and enjoy. The gunfire cocktail was often served ceremonially by officers to lower ranking officers on the morning of a battle to help steal their nerves. It has been served throughout history in other capacities as well. For example, to commissioned men who are forced to serve in the armed forces on a religious holiday like Christmas. It's kind of like a little Christmas morning treat. Now, from a cocktail perspective, you can choose to go simple or complex with this drink. Of course, as it stands, it's kind of trending in the direction of a grog or a toddy to begin with. And you know that if there was sugar or citrus lying around on those ships, those ingredients probably would have been incorporated in the drink historically. Personally, I think this would be nice with just a half ounce of rich Demerara sugar syrup and a squeeze of lemon. And if you're looking for a robust, heavy British style rum to use that's available on today's market, I'd recommend checking out a bottle of Smith and Cross, which is my go-to when I need to make a high proof splash in my rum drinks. Also, feel free to get creative with your teas. You can play around with slight tweaks like an Earl Grey versus an English breakfast blend, or you can go further afield and start curating your blend to the particular bottle you're using. For more information on tea and tea cocktails, check out our interview with Brittany and Joe from The White Tea Company. So, now that you've got a bit of Dutch courage to keep you warm, let's time travel back to the first stop on the tour at Lost Spirits Distillery where I sip on some incredible high-proof rum and Brian Davis regales us with some of the lesser-known and truly outrageous stories from those rum-guzzling sailors in the Royal Navy. I don't know if you ever heard the term Nelson's blood. No, uh, a, I, I actually stayed in Horatio Nelson's house when I was studying abroad, though. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> randomly my study abroad program in, in Bath, England, uh, owned his, it was called Nelson House. It was literally that's his awesome. house. <laughs> <laughs> so actually that ties into the story in a really fun way. So uh, so Admiral Nelson, who's you know probably the most famous admiral in British Royal Navy history, stopped Napoleon's advance, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and when he stopped Napoleon's advance, he did it um, with a really clever strategy of sailing his boats in very close to the enemy ships to counter their numerical advantage so that his guy's higher experience level in combat would get them through, just how they stopped Napoleon. Um, the, the term Nelson's blood, by the way, is a slang term for rum in working class England. And it comes from actually that battle uh, because uh, Admiral Nelson got shot. And the, uh, the musket ball lodged in his spinal cord, but it didn't kill him immediately. He stayed alive long enough to hear that they were victorious. And, uh, and also to make one last final parting wish, which is that he didn't want to be buried at sea. He wanted to be buried back at his estate in England. Uh -huh. And so as a consequence, they had to figure out how to preserve a body to get it back across the English Channel without him rotting before they got him home. And so they came up with a very clever strategy, uh, which was to take the hoops off of the one half of a barrel, open up the barrel, um, stuff the admiral in it, put the barrel back together, seal it back up, and then take a full barrel of rum, dump that into Admiral Nelson's barrel, and then you could pickle him in the rum in order to get him home. Uh, Fantastic. Intact, which is a great idea. <laughs> um, they, uh, they ran into a little bit of trouble 
On the way home, they hit unfavorable winds and got stuck in the middle of the channel for a while. Uh -huh. And so gradually over time, they kept running lower and lower on supplies until eventually they were out of rum except for the barrel that had Admiral Nelson in it, and so they were left with ultimately no choice but to drink the Admiral. Oh, my goodness. So it's a bit of a fun... Uh, I'm British Royal Navy story. I'm surprised that hasn't made its way further into popular culture because that's <laughs> that's that's more fun than the the gunpowder story. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, so I always thought that was a great one. Yeah. Uh, there's another epic one where uh, what's called there's a giant hundred gun ship of the line called the HMS Royal George. Okay. It was actually sank because they were doing maintenance on it in port, and they moved all of the cannons to the center line, which caused the ship to list so they could get to the lower part of the boat. Okay. On purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't realize that they were loading the rum up still. And so the rum barge hadn't loaded all of the barrels evenly because they were still loading and didn't know they were going to be causing it to list. So they had a disproportionate number of barrels on the um, starboard side of the uh, of the ship. And they were making it list to the starboard side. Oh, man. Uh, and so it actually was sank by the rum. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, aside from the like 1,300 people who died on board, yeah. um, it was uh, a significant loss of spirits. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, well, that. And the best part of the story is that they falsified the court martial uh, to protect the officers who had made the bad decisions. Uh, and so, 80 years later, they finally decided to clear the wreckage of this out of Portsmouth Harbor, which is a super busy shipping harbor. Uh huh. And uh, and so the Royal Navy engineers uh, dropped depth charges onto the ship to basically blow all the debris out of the way, so that. Because up until for 80 years, they'd been sailing around the wreckage, which stuck up out of the water. It was such a big ship. Right. And so when they, uh, when they blew it up, the court martial didn't tell them all of the information they needed to know, mainly that the gunpowder had all been loaded already, and there was a significant amount of flammable rum and sealed barrels inside the hull of the ship. And so when they detonated the depth charges, it then detonated the gunpowder, which then detonated the rest of the <laughs> rum. Uh, and it basically created an explosion that blew out every window in Portsmouth two, two miles away. <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> and that is the heritage of what is in this glass right now. You it's got in it. that tradition. All of those stories are in this glass somehow. That's kind of the idea. Um, so I'll give you one last final one we'll get out of here. Uh, the uh, uh, We always sort of end this room with a toast. And the Royal Navy had a toast for every day of the week. Okay. Um, Thursdays is probably my favorite, which is to a bloody war and a swift promotion. <laughs> Let yeah. that one sink in for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when toasting your officers. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> My one lingering question about Nelson's blood is, if the officers told the men what they were drinking, or if they just kind of left the sailors wondering about the strange new flavors in their rum. I suppose we'll never know the truth on that one, which is probably for the best. Next up, we've got a fun little chat with beverage director Chris Olds from Guildhall. Can you introduce yourself and uh, the bar that we are sitting in right now? Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Chris Olds, and I am the beverage director at Guildhall Esports Bar in Burbank, California. Yeah, so this place is really cool. We just uh, recorded a great interview with uh, one of my friends, Sam, who's a, a regular here at Guildhall. Can you explain what an esports bar is and um, like how Guildhall came to be? Yes. Uh, esports bar has a couple different meanings. Esports are obviously uh, video games as sports. Uh, there are many different games like League of Legends and Overwatch, and uh, we have, uh, we've we got the new Super Smash Brothers on the TVs right now. Right, yeah, they're nice big TVs. Yeah, and so uh, basically the, the easiest way to describe us and what we do here yeah. is we are, are a bar, a restaurant, kind of combined with a sports bar, but video games are our sports. Right. So uh, we're often streaming things off of Twitch, which is a website that gamers can just, whatever they're playing, they can upload their stream, and we can watch it here at the bar. Or you can watch it at home on your computer, or you watch it on your phone, whatever. Um, we're all gamers here that work here. Uh, grew up with video games. I mean, I'm the oldest one here, and I've been playing. We were the first, na we were the first house on my block to have a an Atari 2600. Okay. Um, the other people that work here are a little bit younger than me. Um, so they're more on like the online kind of stuff, like Overwatch and your World of Warcraft and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we like to say that we're nerds, but the nerds grew up. So we've got some really nice food. We have a really good charcuterie board. And we also have just like, you know, we've got this great stuffed cheeseburger and uh, do a lot of really good specials and all that kind of stuff. So we kind of run the gamut between... Uh, 
accessible and highbrow kind of food type stuff. And then we've got 16 mostly local taps between Santa, between San Francisco and San Diego. Um, so like the southern half of the West Coast right. is where most of our draft beer comes from. Uh, we've got a solid little wine selection, and I do the cocktails. So I've got about 18 cocktails on this menu, I think, right now. Yeah, between the classics between and Between the, the originals. classics and our originals. And um, I also curate the back bar. I think I have somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 whiskeys down to, across categories, about you know six or seven vodkas. Wow. Yeah, I like the booze. That's great, man. Well, and especially, too, like you look at a bar, right? Esports bar. You think the focus is going to be esports. And so you have low expectations when it comes to things like perhaps food, perhaps cocktails. But it seems like, you know, you've taken your, your one focus, the esports and, you know, the nerds who grew up or whatever. And, and now you've, you've kind of doubled down by making sure you do a good job with all the other stuff. And I think that's a great recipe for exceeding expectations. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the cocktails in particular, because you are the architect of these cocktails. I want to be respectful of your time here. What's your approach to developing drinks, and what do you think the role of a cocktail in an atmosphere like this is? Or like, what's another way to put that would be like, what's a great cocktail for for your bar? Sure. Well, let's. I guess I should give you a little bit of background about me. Please. Uh, I come from Boston. Um, I spent several years bar backing at a place called Eastern Standard, which is a uh, fairly well-known yes. Boston hotel bar. Yes. Um, one of the places that put the Boston cocktail scene on the map or helped cement it in its place in the world. Um, people don't often think about Boston when they think about cocktail cities like New York and Chicago. Mm -hmm. But Boston's been doing it since the mid-90s. Yeah. At least this craft revival. Yes. Which is just normal now. It's not even a revival anymore, right? Right. Um, so I spent about four years there working under Jackson and learning all these different spirits and liqueurs and methods and techniques and stuff. So when I... Cocktails to me are about having a good time drinking and... Uh, kind of like putting things together that find that strike the right balance. You want to have something for everybody. You want to have something that um, people will enjoy and have a good time and walk out saying, you know, I had some really good drinks at this place. The environment around it almost falls by the wayside because it's really about what's, it's just like one aspect of what's going on. Right, you know? right. So when it comes to building cocktails and making cocktails, for me, it's about striking that core between sweet and uh, dry and bitter, um, ref refreshing, whatever it might be. So on the cocktail list that we have here, I try to just find something for everybody, really. It's kind of the philosophy that I was taught when I was learning in Boston and that I've carried with me throughout over the years. Well, and it's so funny because video game categories like, you know, uh, MMORPGs and the first person shooters like like you tend to be when you walk into a bar you know you tend to be a Negroni person or an old fashioned person a martini person and I feel like that maps on pretty closely with the personality types associated with these different game formats and so the, just like as I've walked by I've seen like so many different types of games being streamed on these TVs sure. and I feel like the same thing uh, happened when I looked at your cocktail menu I was like oh you know, here are all these classics. We've got a Moscow Mule, we've got a Paper Plane, we've got an Old Fashioned, a, a, um, a Margarita, and then on the other side, we've got the more experimental stuff. And you see that what you're doing is you're really making sure that there's something for everybody who comes in the door. And all good bartenders, I'm sure yourself included, are able to kind of cater that. But if you don't have it on the menu, it's a lot more difficult to make sure that somebody who comes in the door is guaranteed something that is going to appeal to their palate. Sure. I mean, you know, a lot of times people come in and they say, oh, I just want a Bud Light or a Corona. You say, well, I'm sorry, we don't have that. But you should try this really nice lager from Pasadena. Um, or, you know, sometimes we have a Mexican Amber from El Segundo down by the airport. Yeah. Uh, and when people come in and they want a, you know, I don't know, a strawberry margarita or something like that. I've got cocktails on the menu that can get them into that fruity uh, agave area. Maybe not exactly what they were looking for, but hopefully we can put them in something that they like or kind of push their boundaries out a little bit and make them realize like, oh, looks like I do like gin. Yeah. It's kind of one of my 
<laughs> if I can go on a little tangent here, it's like yeah, my no, number please. one mission in the world to get people who hate gin to drink gin. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love doing it. That's a fan. It's a fantastic goal. I think yeah. it's like if more people had that goal, the world would be a better place. Yep. Yep. <laughs> to quote an old, uh, to quote an old friend of mine, it's a scientific fact that drinking gin makes you smarter. Yeah. It's an old Boston saying. I recently saw some <laughs> stupid article out there that was saying like, oh, gin's a great recovery drink from your... No, it's it's not. It's just a really good spirit. It really don't, is. Don't stop, trying to, stop trying to make excuses for it and just drink it. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, is is there anything else that, that people should know about uh, the Guild Hall, what you guys do, or esports bars in general? Um, I'm just trying to trying to make a really good plug for your place which has some an amazing program um and then also encourage people to go out and try and find places like this near them sure well thank you uh for those kind words um here we just want you to be happy with what you get i mean you want to come in and get some cocktails i'm really proud of the staff that we've assembled here um they have learned a lot over the last we've been here for about a year and a half um we make a Killer old fashioned, uh, is all kinds of different stuff. Sorry, I just got distracted by some sweet potato tater tots coming over here. Yeah, uh, we've got sweet potato tater tots, which are absolutely delicious. Yeah, um, damn, look at that. But as far as other places, like we are kind of unique in our aesthetic and offering all the different things because I don't think we've mentioned yet that we have somewhere around 200 board games that are free to play when you come in. Come in, get a beer, get a cocktail. Grab some food, grab a board game, bring your friends. It's a very social place. It's also important to make the distinction that no one actually plays video games here. It's literally just like watching ESPN when you come into this place. Mm -hmm. People say, what? Oh, you know, why are you watching it? Why would you watch it if you're not playing? The comeback to that is, why do you watch football if you're not playing? Sure. It's the same thing. It's just a different form of entertainment. Right, right, right. Um, so Twitch is a great tool for you guys in that Twitch respect. Twitch is a fantastic tool for us, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we are all about the social aspect of stuff. Oftentimes we have people come in solo that end up joining another group and playing a game, or sometimes couples pair off and start playing four-player games together. Um, as far as other places, um, there are other places that are into board games and into cocktails and into esports, but not quite all around like we are. Right. Um, so I actually had my boss, Spencer, sent me uh, some suggestions. There's a place down in Anaheim called the Lag Bar. Okay. Uh, and they do cocktails and they do, I think they do board games. Now I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, th but they don't do the esports like we do. Sure. Uh, in Glendale, there's a place called Game House, which is the same. They do a lot of board games. They do beer and cocktails, but they don't have the TVs. Uh, there's a place called Battle and Brew that we found out about right after we opened because they trademarked the tagline that we were going to have. <laughs> I'll let you guys look that up. Battle and Brew in Atlanta. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble, you know. I don't know the legality of me saying it over sure, the Sure, sure. But um, they have, like, PlayStations. Oh, that's what Lagbar does, too. They have the Switch. You can, like, get a cocktail to play with the Switch and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. Um, and people are kind of like, people are like, what do you mean you just watch them? And I have to tell you, as the older guy on the staff here, coming in because I'm friends with the owner and, like, doing his cocktails and becoming part of the team here, I didn't really get the appeal of watching video games either. And it has grown on me immensely. Like, just there's all kinds of really weird stuff out there to watch and even things that you'd never think you'd be into watching like watching someone do a speed run of Mario 64. Like how do they do that? How does someone figure out these tricks to do all this crazy stuff that I've played and would never think to try to run through that specific corner of the wall yeah. and fall through digital void and then end up landing <laughs> on top of the womp or whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a really good time. We have Great. a lot of fun here and uh I hope you guys can come by and check it out. Yeah, dude, one last quick follow up because like the the, the name Guild Hall it, it brings up these like very D and D connotations. Yes. Do you guys have some regular D and D groups that come in? I am part of a regular D and D group uh, that is made up of the staff here. Awesome. Uh, we also have yeah several groups of people come in um, on any typical night. You can find these. We have these four big tables in back. You'll find a couple of them pushed together with eight people. Or you'll find like a couple of the high tops taken up by, you know, four or five people just playing D&D &D all night long. And talk about nerds growing up, we like to drink. 
So we just like have all access to all this great beer, all this great booze, rolling dice, killing goblins. It's a I, good time. That sounds amazing. It's a really good time. I think we'll end on killing goblins. Uh, but Chris, <laughs> thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks thank so you. much for sharing about this awesome bar. And um, where can we find you uh, online and on social media? You can find me. Uh, best place to find me is probably on Instagram. And that is at panther underscore gold. It's a solid handle. Yeah, it's a, it's an old prospector joke. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank okay. you so much for having me on. Yeah, and Guildhall, uh, give oh, us yeah. an address and a Guild, handle. Guildhall is, uh, what is Guildhall? I'm going to cheat here and look at my menu. <laughs> uh, on Instagram, we're at Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at the Guildhall Bar. G-U-I-L-D-H-A-L-L-B-A-R. Uh, and you can, yeah, find us online at guildhall.tv. Beautiful. What do you know about that? <laughs> Good thing there were menus on the table. I would have failed that. Well, All the right. one. Chris, my, thanks for your time, man. Save. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. Cheers. <laughs> I had a great time with Chris and Sam in Burbank learning all about a unique beverage program and the wide world of esports. And I think it just goes to show that the next time someone tells you not to play with your food or your drink, you can probably assume they've never been somewhere as awesome as Guildhall. Until next time, I'm Modern Bar Cart CEO Eric Koslick, wishing you a bloody war and a swift promotion. Cheers. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, there's two big things you can do for us here at Modern Bar Cart. One would be to tell your friends and family if you think they'd enjoy listening to us talk about cocktails. And if they don't download podcasts, they can always stream our episodes on their desktop directly from the show notes page at modernbarcart.com. The other thing you can do to help would be to head on over to iTunes or wherever you download your podcasts and leave us a review. Five stars are great, but we're more interested in your feedback. And the beauty is the more reviews we have, the easier it will be for other folks out there to learn about our show. We're trying to start cocktail revolution here and by spreading the word you're helping us fight the good fight you can always reach us by emailing podcast at modernbarcart.com if you're looking for cocktail or bartending advice or if you're a pro who would like to pull up a mic and be interviewed for all to hear also definitely follow us on instagram and facebook at modern bar cart for cocktail porn recipes and entertaining tips and keep an eye out for new product releases and special offers, which are happening all the time. We love our listeners and we really enjoy giving you exclusive discounts and sneak peeks at our latest and greatest cocktail projects. This episode may be over, but for you, the mixological fun and adventures are just beginning. So remember folks, drink responsibly and experiment boldly. This episode was made possible with editing and production assistance by first mate Samantha Reed, overproof rum and highly flammable storytelling by Rear Admiral Brian Davis of Lost Spirits, delicious sweet potato tots and esports insights courtesy of Commodore Chris Olds, and Guildhall, and a little bit of interview magic by yours truly. This has been a Modern Bar Cart production, copyright 2019.